Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. All right, uh, we'll pick up, uh, at least for members, I did a, a after a post-FOMC update, and I was uh, cautioning that one was uh, quite possibly early because we had just uh, gotten over the announcement, had a couple initial knee-jerk reactions. Let me talk about that real quick. Here's the uh, 2 o'clock hour right here. Uh, as I say, uh, one thing that's all but guaranteed during these uh, FOMC days, especially when the market's hanging on every word, is uh, these rips and dips. So if you zoom in there, that's that's the line right there. I don't know if you see it on the crosshairs. This was 2 p.m. So you had the uh, initial rip, subsequent uh, or initial dip, subsequent rip, followed by another dip, and followed by another rip. So this is what I said. You never read it too much into this and this is all everything today you know, today's you know there's only two hours since the uh left in trading or what were left in trading this is all what i call post fomc noise so it doesn't you can't take a lot and about the only thing i can guarantee on a fed day is you're going to get whipsaw signals you're going to get these knee-jerk reactions so let's talk about what happened uh during the video i did right after the fomc meeting we were trading right here at the lows and i went through um both QQQ, SPY, the futures, and then the top components of uh, the NASDAQ 100. I covered Intel, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, um, Facebook, and uh, I believe uh, Intel, and showed you that they were all at support as I was doing the video, and that support was either going to hold or break. And if we broke, uh, that we would continue down to the next levels and probably build on those losses. And I said if those levels held, uh, again, we were right right at the bottom of this candle right there. Uh, if they held, we'd probably rally from there into the close. So that's what happened today. Now, all of it, we can't take a lot from it because look where we rallied. Right back up to that 300. There's a previous high from this. We had this uh, trading range recently that we locked into in uh, on waiting on the Fed for the last couple of days. And so we're right, right back to the top of that trading range. So basically we had this little whipsaw signal. And again, that's why you have to take it. Anything that happens, whether it broke to the upside or downside, take it with a big grain of salt, especially immediately in the wake. And then, of course, take today's move with a grain of salt. But it doesn't tell us anything because we, we pretty much closed right at uh, that uh, the resistance level that we've been trading at or bound by in the last few days there so this is certainly to be continued and uh, just put out a couple charts on the site here let me let me pull those up for you hold on one second okay here I put up this post um, and showed you pretty much you know I've been saying for the last almost week now you know, probably you're putting about roughly equal odds whether or not we get a marginal new high, which, as I said, to me is very limited. It's limited to about 2-3% to the upside uh, before reversal. So I'll make it very clear. You know, I have two different opposing scenarios here, but they're both bearish scenarios. One's just very near term. Do we have another 2-3% upside before the next leg down, or do we reverse here? We overshot these trend lines, so here I'm going to get to these in a second. That was uh, NQ. And uh, here's ES right here, same story. So I got these out shortly before the close. We drifted just above them into the close, but that doesn't count. I'll talk on that. You know, let's get to those charts here in a second. But I just want to highlight again. Here, you know what? Let's go to the live charts. Those were taking those screenshots at uh, 338. So let's just pull up the uh, live charts here. Uh, it's not gas. Here we go. Now, a couple things to this. So here's the uh, trend line right there that we broke, our primary trend line, which gave us a sell signal shortly before the FOMC meeting. But as I said earlier, we're not going to go too far. Uh, you're not going to break down and drop much, nor are you going to break out and rally much right in front of a Fed meeting. That is about as guaranteed as anything you ever get in the market. Markets go into a holding pattern just before the, the meeting. All right, got rid of that chart somehow. Here it is. So there's the breakdown, and we're still below trend. That's very pretty straightforward stuff. And as I showed you in those scenarios, to me it's simply a matter of um, uh, do we, you know, inch up a couple more percentage points and, you know, equal or, or take out these previous highs that would give us a marginal new high and then reverse. Because the one thing that I can tell you with certainty uh, is that if it happens soon, as in this week, let's say early next week, uh, it will have put in a it will be a divergent high uh, because the way the indicators are lagging uh, you know if we kind of do this for a while uh, for a couple of weeks then break out you know maybe things change down here so again this is kind of contingent this 
guaranteed divergent high scenario is contingent on a pop soon. Um, so these, you know, so the indicators can't, uh, won't be able to keep up. We'll put in lower lows and that's it. Now, let me talk on this. You can see here the futures drifted up right into the close. Um, as a trader, and I've said this many times over the years, I rarely take any breakouts that occur within 30 minutes of close, and I never, ever count a breakout that occurs, you know, within a few minutes to close. So we were here when I posted those 20 minutes ago. We only broke in the last final minutes of trading above these trend lines, and that is what I call a, a couple things, and the reason you don't take those breakouts. There's always position squaring at the end. If the trend is up, you had a big move up, you have that momentum going in, so it's it's not uh, uh, abnormal unnormal uh, at all uh, to to break out above there you know run over and get a what I call a momentum fueled overshoot you know since the reversal we had a lot of upside momentum going in there so uh, and we also parked as I just showed you a second ago we parked right at resistance as well so this to me uh, I'm just viewing it uh, say you know momentum fueled overshoot if it sticks tomorrow great if we futures can hold this level overnight uh, they still uh, have uh, significant resistance, 79.27 right there uh, to go. And as I uh, showed you guys in today's earlier video for members, that uh, I took the question mark away from the right shoulder here. In fact, let's take it away from head as well. Uh, let's go here. It is now a head and shoulders pattern, whether it uh, triggers. So it's a fully formed or fully matured head and shoulders stopping pattern. Let me get to that in a second. No more question marks. Um, now we just need a sell trigger, just like any pattern. For example, if you have a, uh, you know, a falling wedge pattern, you know, stocks are doing this, you don't have a buy signal until you get the breakout of the pattern. There's your buy signal when you break out. And a head and shoulders pattern, or any technical pattern for that matter, uh, it's a inherently bearish pattern, but the sell signal comes on a break above the uh, uh, below the neckline so we made at uh, today's lows a uh, kiss of that neckline right there and that gave us the right shoulder and now at this point whether we want to put in a second right shoulder there would be a complex head and shoulders pattern when you have not one but two shoulders on either or both sides um, but either way uh, we're we're there and should we go down today I'm sorry tomorrow in the overnight session today maybe or tomorrow Friday anytime soon before we invalidate this pattern. By invalidated, I mean taking out the highs. So like I said, to me, it's really a matter of does my more bearish of the two scenarios play out or not. The, the you know, the, the near-term bullish, longer-term bearish scenario would have us come up, inch up, make a marginal new high, then break out. That's going to invalidate the head and shoulders pattern, but it will still keep the larger um, wedge pattern going here we have you know maybe a back test like I talked about before so a lot can happen and uh, most importantly again don't take too much into the the initial drop today nor the reversal this is typical Fed noise this is what happens during Fed meetings that happened during the last meeting and uh, you know you can't take a lot from what happens a day of the Fed meeting but what happens going forward from here now that it's out of the way does matter so, uh, like I said, you have 79.26, uh, 79.80-ish right there. That was a top. I gave you this little smaller head and shoulders pattern right there that we had at the highs that broke down. There was your neckline. That's when it broke down. So I have the two right shoulders on that one, about 79.80. Those, those reactions are resistance levels. And, of course, let me just extend this trend line out. There it is. And to measure it out for you, well, I'd have to move that trend line on the grab a little bit above it here and move a little higher uh, yeah you can see there what is that one percent uh, should we back test that trend line tomorrow you're talking about a one percent move from where we're at so as I said in that post earlier today right here um, you know I said I'd still give it roughly equal odds on either a you know a, sl uh, a pop up to new highs um, or breakout and I said one thing I can tell you with conviction is that a short here you know where we close today uh, even still right above these trend lines with a stop not far above is certainly objective and uh, and it has a nice RR. What does that mean? Well, a stop right here, if this plays out, this head and shoulders pattern plays out, here's your measured target of the pattern alone. It's the distance of the head to the neckline. And you add that to where it breaks down. So let's say we reverse, break down there. You're talking a drop that's probably going to bring us down here. And to me, this little bit loss on a stop, if you're stopped out, somewhere in here wherever you want to do it if you want to allow it all the way up there it all depends on how much you're shooting for 
but uh, I think that's that's certainly objective. And again, a tight stop would have a minimal loss. If if we do reverse, the upside potential would be much much larger. So you guys trade that as you want, or like I said before, stand aside. It's an F Fed day. See what happens after the dust settles, which is after today's tomorrow. The market will start to pick a direction. If it wants to punch new highs, we'll probably have a good idea by tomorrow, I think, and, and most certainly by Friday. Uh, so those are the levels, and that was NQ. Let me show you ES. Uh, same story. Let me, uh, yeah, well, we'll leave it here. You can see the trend line there. Uh, trend line off the lows that was broken right here. And so should uh, ES, you know, hold again, I view this as late day momentum overshoot right there. Uh, ES has a little bit of resistance, but if it can break out or hold above here in, you know, overnight session tonight or, and or tomorrow, then you're talking same thing, a marginal new high, I think at best. Anything, of course, anything much more than that, and I'm just wrong, and the market goes a lot higher. Uh, but that's that's the way I look at it now. So I still think the um, upside's minimal, and um, we don't really have... Uh, eh, I don't want to try to force anything here. I like the IH or the head and shoulders pattern a little bit better on NQ. I think it's better formed, more symmetrical. But we want to draw it here, replicate it. There's your left shoulder. There's your head. Uh, we never really came down to the neckline here. You should touch the neckline, and uh, so let's just let's just see what happens. Uh, really, with NQ, NQ will take take the market down. NQ and those market leading stocks make up the bulk of the market. So if uh, uh, NASDAQ 100 breaks down, so does uh, the S&P 500. And then the, for you index traders, there's SPY, kind of busy with the trend lines, everything that's gone on. And again, that's the choppiness leading into a Fed meeting. But uh, the most salient levels here, we had the uptrend line, which was broken. That put us on a sell signal. Nothing's changed there. We broke down. We didn't go far, as I said, because we had that holding pattern going into the Fed. And we pretty much came up to our highs the other day right there. We have a, a support around 300. And as I said, again, during the video, we were a little bit under the 299 level. I said that support right here. I have it shows 298.94. We'll call, we'll call that 299. And um, we were trading below. And I said if we snap back above it, you know, that they we'd probably rally. And that's what happened there. So we just, all those stocks held that support got tested we had a little over a little bit of a momentum fueled overshoot on that initial reaction down um but we held 299 today so that's a level that's a level to watch going forward if it breaks and uh here's the scenario here we had a divergent high when we topped and so far we're below that trend line and if we come in uh it would look like this if we happen to rally up uh and i'll measure it out for you here on spy from where we closed today uh, if we hit that level, we're talking again less than one percent, maybe about. It depends if and when we get there, and of course how high. You know, you can play around with these divergence lines. Would it look like this? Would it be an equal high? You know, that's all you really need to have divergence if the indicators uh, continue to lag and make lower highs down here. So uh, that's it. So yeah, I'm I'm going home short tonight. Uh, I think the risk reward is worth it, and I'll I'll. You know, give it a little more upside. Still have those swing shorts from here. We'll get to that right here. Uh, from all the way back here, uh, if you guys remember, uh, was short from here going down. This leg down, cover going long. Said uh, from halfway up, I had a maximum bounce target, which is exactly where we went to. And I said I would scale in, close my longs here, half with the midpoint, scale in uh, to shorts up to, but not above that level. And those are all the swing positions that I refer to. Those are in IRAs and long-term accounts. Active trading, I'm in and out of the queues, NQ, uh, day trading that more actively in the active trading account. But in that account, too, I'm going home short. And uh, you can see here, you know, from where we were, you know, when that's where we added the last uh, short trade on the site, we're still, even after today's, you know, Rally. Oh, by the way, today we closed red. Don't don't make no mistake about it now, uh, or make no mistake about it. We closed down uh, virtually flat. We'll call it flat, but 0.04 percent. So it was a nice intraday recovery, but it didn't it didn't change anything technically um, because we are. And, and I'm just measuring from that level we shorted back, 
you know, what, two months ago, the market's only up 1.85%. This is a market that's run out of gas. And all this stuff, you know, it's dramatic moves if you're over leveraged, over positioned. Um, but again, it's a go nowhere market. And just forget about my thoughts on, on the bigger picture. Again, I covered that in a video earlier today for members uh, with the long-term charts, levels to watch there, which have yet to break, but we're really close. Let's keep this very simple. Here's your, this is, remember that BOD, the secondary, the benefit of the doubt trend line in NQ, or QQQ, I'm sorry. And again, we had right here a wedge. We had a divergent high. We went down, we broke that, and we came up for a back test of that trend line today. So today was a breakdown and a back test of this trend line on QQQ. Should we happen to pop above it, again, any new high anytime soon will be a divergent high, and that's it. So to me, it's not worth trying to, you know, go long uh, and attempt to squeeze out a, another 1%, 2% or so, maybe 3% upside max, uh, whereas we could turn around and let's say, you know, this is a rejection here and it happens with the futures dropping overnight. You could gap down and then you're left behind. So that's that's the way I view trading. So that's it guys. We'll see where we go from here and let me get this video out to you guys and of course to be continued tomorrow and into Friday. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.